Happy Wednesday! <laughs> so, last night, New Hampshire clarified a few things for us. First, that Donald Trump will probably be the Republican nominee for 2024. All right. True. That's as much a lock as President Biden making up a new word. We'll teach Donald Trump a valuable lesson. Don't mess with the men in America unless you want to get the benefit. Wait, what was that lesson exactly? Don't give a microphone to someone with dementia? The second lesson, that Dana Prina will never be welcome in New Hampshire again. Dana, that was a water fountain, not a bidet. <laughs> Now, somehow, Nikki Haley came out and gave a victory speech, which is kind of like the Hindenburg declaring victory over fire. But wow, she's doing like a speech like she won. I said, wow, she's doing uh, like a speech like she won. <laughs> she didn't win, she lost. This is not your typical victory speech, but let's not have somebody take a victory when she had a very bad night. She had a very bad night. A very bad night. And yet I can go up and I can say to everybody, oh, thank you for the victory. I said, I can go up and I can say to everybody, oh, thank you for the victory. It's wonderful. It's what, or I can go up and say, who the hell was the imposter that went up on the stage before and like claimed a victory? She did very poorly, actually. Mm, it's true. But do you find in life you can't let people get away with I find in life you can't let people get away with Okay, you can't. You just can't do that. And when I watched her in the fancy dress that probably wasn't so fancy, come up, I said, what's she doing? We won. <laughs> the dress, not so fancy. Trump carried New Hampshire by double digits in a state where more Democrats voted in the Republican primary than Republicans did. That usually only happens in Chicago, and those voters are dead. It's not easy to lose badly in a situation like that and then claim victory. She must be getting advice from Liz Cheney. Ooh. So what gives? Why would Nikki treat a New Hampshire hammering like a win? Just because she lost by less than expected? Hell, if Michael Jordan had that attitude, he wouldn't be in Cooperstown. I get it, actually. Thank you. <laughs> But it comes down to money and power. If she acts like she lost, there goes the gravy train. And maybe she thinks if she sticks around, Trump might put her on the ticket. After all, when it comes to people, Trump will trash them, then appoint them, then trash them again. It's his thing. One day you're in, the next day you're out. I'm the same way with my proctologist. <laughs> Now, by some predictions, Nikki did better than expected. Although, after Iowa, she could have showed up and lit a chinchilla on fire, and the media would have said she did better than expected. The media says the same thing when Biden doesn't poop his pants. <laughs> but Trump's victory means the deal's pretty much sealed. And if we know that, Nikki knows that, which is why, as primary day approached, a new Nikki emerged, woke Nikki. Suddenly, we're hearing pandering anecdotes about Nikki facing discrimination for being brown when she was growing up. Nikki also claimed that she was disqualified from a beauty pageant when she was five because she was neither black nor white. But hey, that's happened to me too. I also blamed race when I didn't get the role for Webster. <laughs> but it's part of the game. You pick a lane and hers was identity. We were the only Indian family in our small Southern town. I was teased every day for being brown. I get it. I also was teased for being brown, but what do you expect when you get 28 wedgies a day? Ew. <laughs> but look, I'm not questioning her origin story or how it impacted her life. All that sucks. But when you're pandering to the Dems as a Republican, it's kind of embarrassing. So last night, her constituency wasn't really Republicans. It was Democrats. In a way, she's running against her own party, not just Trump. And now the Democratic primary in New Hampshire was also last night, and two little-known challengers got roughly a quarter of the votes between them. There's Dean Phillips, who was so unknown, even his wife and kids asked to see his ID. <laughs> Marion Williamson, who has completely transformed into a scented candle. Yet they peeled 25% of the vote away from this sitting president. 
And hell, even Madonna after plastic surgery is more recognizable than both of them. <laughs> Maybe it's because Biden didn't even go to New Hampshire. He was in Virginia. Maybe he thought it was New Hampshire. <laughs> and it was there that he said this. Hello, Virginia. <laughs> and the real governor, Terry McAuliffe. Yeah. How's that for election denial? Maybe someone should file articles of impeachment right now. I say he should go to prison with the rest of the Jan Sixers, but they've suffered enough already. <laughs> so while the media contorts itself to somehow make this a loss for Trump and Nikki spends tens of millions getting pummeled, Biden appears weaker, frailer, and frankly, deader. So when the media tells you this thing is far from over, they're right. The problem is they're talking about the wrong guy. Let's welcome a tonight's guest. When he trips and falls, he always lands on his hair. Fox News contributor Charlie Hurts. Even Governor Hochul is sorry he didn't beat her. Former Congressman Lee Zeldin. This cat has nine lives, thanks to being an expert at identity theft. New York Times bestselling author and Fox News contributor Cat Tip. And he's an expert in MMA, making men afraid. New York Times bestselling author, comedian, and former NWA World Television Champion, Sarah. Charlie, I'm already sick of this topic, but we have to talk about it because <laughs> yeah. it's supposed to be important. Do you think Nikki Haley is sticking around because she's angling for VP, or is that ship sailed? I don't know. I mean, his uh, Trump's comments about her uh, a week or so ago, they were pretty Sherman-esque. Yeah. To the point where he, what he said about it, he said she wasn't presidential timber. And then he followed it up by saying, the fact that I said this means that you can hold me to it and I can't undo it. <laughs> and, and if you think about it, you know, whenever the, you have these discussions, my question always is, okay, what's the ad that Democrats can run against them when he picks her? Mm -hmm. Well, it's going to be a pretty devastating ad, and we're not just talking about the comments about the dress. Mm -hmm. But I think it's funny, um, I, I thought his speech last night, you know, everybody's been talking about how well-behaved mm -hmm. Trump has been the last couple of weeks. And then last night, uh, he was like, he took, the, he took the chain off and uh, went after her. Uh, I think because she really, I think she really ticked him off. Yeah. And he was not going to, and, and and of course, you can't blame him. I mean, you can't, Trump, the one thing everybody can agree ab uh, upon about Trump, it, other than the fact that he's highly entertaining and hilarious, is that if you poke him, he's coming after you. Yes, exactly. He will come back with 100 pokes. You can't claim that you're a victim if yeah. you poke him first. Yeah, you know, Lee, Kamala Harris got the VP nod after basically, call, well, literally calling Joe Biden a racist. Remember that? In the debate, saying, I was that girl on the bus, Joe. And then all of a sudden, he's... So, I mean, it could happen here, right? This isn't the Democratic Party <laughs> of 2020, which has only gotten more woke since then. Uh, yes, Kamala Harris was able to elevate to the number two position in the country following this particular model of being the first this, the first that. I don't think that Donald Trump in choosing a vice president is is looking for that above merit, above mm -hmm. where that person stands on issues, whether there's chemistry, the person's a hard, a hard worker, the right fit. He's not looking to trade all of those traits in. By the way, yesterday, it was a blowout amongst registered Republicans. I mean, he crushed uh, uh, Nikki Haley. Mm. And, I mean, she should be getting the hint here that it's time to step aside, allow us to unite, if she really cares about what's most important, which is saving this country, about making sure that Joe Biden doesn't get four more years. I mean, she could do her part in a really big way by calling up President Trump and saying, you're going to be the nominee. I cannot win any of the 50 states. What can I do to help? That phone call needs to happen yesterday. If it's not gonna happen yesterday, it should happen tonight. Mm. Lee Zeldin. Lee Zeldin clearly angling for VP. <laughs> Cad, you're an astute watcher of primary politics. You were up all night watching this, tabulating. You actually personally went to New Hampshire to count them. No, I actually watched, I did watch it. Yes. I texted Dana, I was like, how are you alive? <laughs> She's on all day. Oh no, this is gonna be the year for the libertarians. <laughs>
<laughs> Just kidding, guys. I know it, it never it never is our year. Yeah. Uh, but I, that's you know that, that's what I believe. Um, yes. I, Nikki Haley, I think it's interesting how she's trying to make appeals to people. You know, growing up, I was bullied. Like I was bullied also growing up. You know, and I didn't grow up to love war. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent point from the libertarian. <laughs> yes. What were you bullied over? No, oh, my being myself. <laughs> <laughs> were you ever? It was kind of on me. Yeah. Were you ever disqualified from a beauty pageant? I would never go five? near a beauty pageant. You know what? You know what? I, I was a very androgynous looking child. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but the more important question: Did your parents ever enroll you in a segregated beauty <laughs> yeah, pageant? I'm very confused. <laughs> were the, yeah, I didn't really understand what the, what, what was this pageant? Was it like it? Was it at a Marriott? Like where was it? I, 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 Apparently it was in like the the 40s. Yeah, no, it, it had to be. She was five, She's 50 something, so it had to be the late 70s, Tyrus. Yeah. Well, that, to be fair, okay, in the 70s it was still illegal in some states, mm -hmm. my home state of Boston, Massachusetts, for the for the blacks to marry the whites. Yeah. So I, I guess when she went to the world's racist beauty pageant, <laughs> uh, she was a little too confused. <laughs> And she insulted the racist judges, which is hard to do. Yeah, especially at five. Yeah. So here's the here's the issue I have. I don't. Let's just say, for argument's sakes, that all those things mm -hmm. that she said happened. Mm -hmm. All that only further makes your journey to be able to run for president in the United States greater, mm -hmm. because you overcame obstacles. Mm -hmm. But that's not the speech she's making, because yeah. I would support that. I'd be like, yep, they called me brown every day. But guess what? Now they might call me Madam President. Mm -hmm. That's a great story. And that's people who have used something, because everyone in this audience has got a story. You, we all have a story. It doesn't matter what color, what, somebody didn't like you for some reason. But she's not doing that. She's, she's placating to who's writing the script now. Do you know what she's doing? She was dif differentiating herself from other Republicans, saying, I'm not racist like they are. Yeah, which is crazy seeing how the most straight up, let the best man woman win regardless of color is being shown at the highest level at the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. We had two brown people. Mm -hmm. Good thing Vivek didn't show up at that beauty pageant. It would have been. <laughs> <laughs> You imagine the look on the racist black guys and white guys like, <laughs> someone want to explain to me how two brownies got in here? <laughs> it's so funny. I wonder if she ever brought that up while Vivek was around. <laughs> no, because whenever, you know, it's funny because the brown on brown hate was pretty solid between <laughs> Vivek and Nikki. That's true. Like, she just, the look of him disgusted her. She called them scum. She literally was behaving like the racist black and white <laughs> organization didn't let her compete. So you have to be careful that you don't become what you hate. Because whenever Vivette came in the room, she's like, I hate that brown <laughs> So we just have to be careful. It's so funny, though. She did call him, she called him scum. It was like Asian on Asian hate crime. It <laughs> yeah. was like the, he's Korean. He's not Chinese. You know, so it's like. Wow. So true. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.